Welcome back to Sourdough MD. Today we're going to be talking about making sourdough bagels. This is one of my favorite recipes, one of my favorite things to make, and I hope you enjoy making it with us. The first thing I wanted to talk about when we get, uh, as we get going is store-bought bagels. They look like bagels, they have the shape of bagels, but these are very, very cakey. They don't have the right texture. When we make bagels, we want to make a bagel that cracks when you, you uh, bite into it and has a very, very chewy, wonderful texture inside. So this is what we're going to make today. As we've talked about in weeks past, uh, we're going to be talking about three beautiful but simple ingredients, flour, water, and salt. When we talk about making bagels, we're going to add one additional ingredient uh, for an authentic bagel, which is malt syrup. We can add about two tablespoons of malt syrup to the water uh, as we make our bagels for that authentic bagel taste. You don't need to, uh, and today uh, we're not going to be totally authentic because we're not going to be making our bagel with malt syrup. We're going to stick to flour, water, and salt. But for those of you purists uh, who can find some barley malt syrup, go ahead and add a couple of tablespoons to your water. Remember, when we made a high hydration dough like focaccia, that has very open texture, we used, uh, we used about 80% hydration. Today, a bagel has a very closed texture or closed crumb. We want to lower that hydration. The perfect hydration level for bagel dough is about 57 to 60%. To make things simple today, we're going to make a recipe with 60% hydration, and uh, we're going to show you how to do it. So let's go create our own recipe. You can create your own recipe by hand, or we've made it very simple for you. Simply come into sourdoughmd.com and if you go into recipe calculator, we choose the hydration percentage. We're going to make this 60% hydration dough. In order to make about 18 bagels, we are going to use 1,000 grams of flour. We typically add about 20% of the weight of the flour, which would be 200 grams of starter and that will spit out our recipe for us. So for 60% hydration bagels, we're gonna have 1,000 grams of flour, 200 grams of starter, 560 grams of water, and 22 grams of salt. So let's go ahead and get started with our recipe. The first thing that we've measured out is 200 grams of the starter. This starter uh, has been prepared over about the last eight hours. We have uh, fed it, and it's lovely, bubbly, and just gorgeous. So we've added 200 grams of our starter. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and add is 560 grams of the water. We've tested this water. It's between 78 and 82 degrees, which is just right for water. We'll go ahead and add that to our starter. You'll notice that the starter is floating on top of the water, which is what we want to see in an active starter. So the next thing that we're going to go and ahead and add is our flour mixture. This is a thousand grams of the flour. We'll go ahead and add that. Once we get all of those, uh, those ingredients together, we're just going to rough up this dough by stirring that together. Here is our auto lease step. We haven't added any of the salt. Remember, salt inhibits the yeast. And so for about the next 30 minutes to an hour, we're going to allow this dough to sit here covered up and then we'll come back in about 30 minutes to an hour, we'll add the salt and go on with our bulk fermentation step. Okay, we're back. It's been 45 minutes, and you can see here's our dough. It's been uh, sitting here during the auto lease portion, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add 22 grams of salt. We add our salt mixture, and now we're ready to go ahead and knead the dough. We can knead the dough in one of two ways. We can either do it with a stand mixer, and if we put it on level one on the stand mixer, I typically will knead the dough for about five minutes. If I put it on level two, I can do it for two to three minutes. Again, there's no hard and fast rule. You can also do it by hand. And generally by hand, it takes a little longer, but this is a great dough to knead by hand because it's a very stiff dough and it's a lot of fun to knead. So we're gonna show you both. Today, we're gonna put it on the stand mixer and we'll put it on a number two and then we'll knead it a little bit by hand uh, just to look at that as well. It's been a couple of minutes in the stand mixer. Now we're going to go ahead and knead it just a little bit by hand to take a look at and see what that looks like. So 
you can see that this is a very thick, rich dough. The way I like to knead this is simply by pushing with the heel of your hand and then pulling back and hooking back with your fingers and pulling back like this. So use the heel of your hand, take your fingers, hook the dough back. Heel of your hand, hook the dough back. And again, it typically takes about eight to 10 minutes, but it depends on how vigorous you are um, in kneading the dough. Okay, it's been another couple of minutes. We've been kneading our bread dough. We have this lovely, lovely bagel dough. And now we're ready to go ahead and bulk ferment the dough. The way that we're gonna do that, as always, we're going to place the dough in a greased mixing bowl. And we're going to allow that sourdough starter to start to break down the wheat protein inside the flour and ferment it over the next four hours or so. Um, we are going to, as always, about once an hour, we're going to go ahead and turn our dough and we'll come back in four hours and we'll move on to our next step. Welcome back. It's been about four, uh, just over four hours of bulk fermentation and we've got beautiful dough. This dough has uh, become, it's expanded and it's got some air in it. And this is how it should feel uh, once you get through with the bulk fermentation. Again, it's a stiffer dough and it's a lot of fun to work with. So I'm going to show you how uh, we are going to, first of all, form our bagels and then we'll have them on the tray. We'll proof them and then we'll boil them and cook them. So first, and, and this is the fun part of bagel making. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my dough out and I am going to uh, weigh out about a hundred, we've got 1800 grams of dough here, uh, or almost 1800. And so if we make bagels that are between 95 and 100 grams, we should get 18 bagels out of this dough. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut off about 100 grams of dough and we'll weigh it out so that we are uh, about just right. That's a 97 grams there, that's just perfect. I'm gonna take the rest of the dough and I'm going to cover it with a little bit of cellophane because I don't want the dough to develop a skin on it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this dough uh, that, that we've just cut off and I am going to use the bench and I'm gonna roll it around. It sticks a little bit to the bench and with your hand and with the bench, as you roll it around, it creates a tension over the top of the dough and you create this beautiful little ball like this. Now this is the same technique that I often use for making rolls for some types of donuts, pita bread, and other things. So you'll use this technique quite a bit. Now that I've got the, the uh, dough shaped like this, there are two things I can do. I can either flatten it with a palm and then roll it out, or I can take my rolling pin and I can roll it out about five inches in diameter. I like using a rolling pin because it knocks the air out of the dough. And again, we want that nice close texture. And then I'm going to roll it down. And now what I wanna do is roll the dough out so it's about eight or nine inches in diameter. The other thing that we're going to do now is if you'll look at most New York bagels, they have a little twist in them. This is where the twist com comes from. As you roll it out to eight or nine inches, if you add that twist in there, then what you'll do is roll it around your hand, overlap it by about two inches, and then take it against the bench and just roll it and seal it, okay? Again, your bagels aren't gonna be perfect, but this is the fun type, uh, the fun part of bagel making. And then what you should be left with is a nice little bagel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my baking sheet that's been sprayed with a little bit of canola oil so the bagels won't stick. Now I'd like to introduce you to uh, a couple of important people to me. These are my identical twin girls and they are bagel forming experts. And this is one of the fun things that we do together. So they are gonna help me measure these bagels out. We're gonna roll them out and we'll do all 18.
All right, we've, uh, we've formed our 18 bagels, and uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have them on the baking tray, and again, uh, on parchment that's been sprayed. We're going to let them proof now uh, for about, uh, you know, generally when we proof bread, we've been proofing it for about three hours. With the bagels, what we want them to do is double in volume. And it'll depend on the warmth of, or how warm your kitchen is and what time of year it is. But it might take anywhere from one to three and a half hours for, uh, for these bagels to double in volume. Uh, it'll probably be about between two hours and maybe three hours. Um, but we'll keep an eye on them and then we'll come back and we'll boil them and bake them. It's been about two and a half hours since we started proofing and our bagels have over doubled in volume. Um, there are three points that I want to make before we go any farther. One, uh, the first is that uh, we are kind of cheating a little bit with our bagels. Uh, after the bulk fermentation, we formed our bagels and then we went straight into a proofing. Uh, to get the richest flavor, you really should put your bagels in the fridge overnight and then bring them out and, and make sure that they've doub doubled in volume. The longer you proof your bagels, the, uh, the richer the flavor. Now, we're gonna have some great tasting bagels, but uh, we're gonna do this as pragmatically as possible. So we're going straight into this stage. Uh, number two, let's talk about why we boil bagels. What boiling does is it pre-gelatinizes the starch. You get liquid water that's locked up in solid starch and it sets the crust of the bagel and allows for that crunchy outer crust. The other thing it does is that it will arrest the bagel, it will make it so that the bagel won't rise much once you boil it. The longer the boil, uh, the less the bagel will rise. We can boil a bagel anywhere from about 30 seconds to three minutes. And for us, what I want to do is boil it on the low end of time. So we're gonna do 20 minutes, or 20 seconds rather, on each side. There are a couple of things that we can put in water. One of the typical things is putting about a, a tablespoon of baking soda in the water. Baking soda alkalizes the water and will help with browning uh, of the bagel. And it will also help with flavor. It'll, get it, it'll give the bagel a little bit of a pretzel-y flavor. We've decided that we're going to use a little bit of baking soda in our water and we'll add one tablespoon. And what we're using here, instead of a big boiling pot of water, what we're gonna use is a saute pan that's deep enough to allow the bagels to boil. And you'll see how that works now. Here we've got our boiling water and I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon of baking soda to the water. Okay, and once we've got it uh, up to a nice rolling boil, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my timer on here and just start allowing it to count down and so that I can watch it for 20 seconds at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take about four bagels at a time and I wanna put them all in as fast as I can so that they all cook at about the same rate. So here are three bagels. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wire strainer and I'm just gonna flip those bagels over like so. Okay, and then we're gonna take them out now, once we take them out, there's a number of things that we can do for our bagels. Uh, we want to decorate our bagels. We can either leave them plain, or there are a number of ways that we can decorate them. We can use poppy seeds. We can use Asiago cheese. There's a very popular everything but the basil, uh, bagel sesame a seasoning blend from Trader Joe's. And you can find generic everything but the bagel blends also from just your uh, local grocery store. So we'll use some of these while the bagel is wet and we'll just sprinkle some of the everything but the bagel spice. The other thing I like to do is I like to keep, uh, I like to keep cinnamon and sugar on hand in a jar so that we can use that for a seasoning. And the ratio I like is about a fourth of a cup of cinnamon and sugar to a tablespoon of, um, of the cinnamon. So let's go ahead and continue to boil our bagels. All right, 
right, we've now finished boiling the bagels. We're going to go ahead and finish decorating these bagels, and then I'll show you how we get them into the oven. Okay, we've finished boiling our bagels, we've decorated them, and all we need to do is bake them now. Again, uh, like many of the, the types of bread that we bake, we're going to bake the bread at 450 degrees in the oven. We're going to uh, use uh, a middle and, and lower rack, and then we'll switch the, the sheets about halfway through baking. And we're going to bake for a total of 20 minutes, and we'll switch the, the baking sheets at about half time. If the bagels start to brown too much on the top, you can simply go in and flip them over. What I, uh, what I find that works the best is to actually bake the bagels on top of a rack inside uh, over some parchment paper and inside a baking sheet. And the way that they come off most easily is if you'll simply spray the rack with just a, a bit of cooking spray to make sure the bagels come off easily. So we'll go ahead and load the bagels on and then put them right into the oven for baking. It's been 20 minutes, let's take a look at our bagels. All right, we've got beautifully browned bagels that have a, an absolutely wonderful uh, crunchy outer crust. They're gonna be chewy on the inside and uh, they're gonna be just perfect. I hope you love this recipe. It's very fun to make. Uh, one of the things about uh, eating bagels is that they should be eaten warm and uh, really they should be eaten within the first four to five hours after making them. If you'd like to save them for later, I find the best way is once they're cooled to simply slice them in half and then freeze them in a freezer bag. And then when you get them out of the freezer bag, you can toast them and they're, they're just wonderful. I hope you enjoy making these sourdough bagels at home. And um, if you do enjoy making these sourdough bagels at home, uh, please send an email with, uh, with the photos of your bagels to sourdoughmd at gmail.com. We would love to see your, po uh, your pictures and post them on our blog. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.